Hearts, welcome back to my channel. This is Nancy from nancybadijo.com and welcome to another Exy video. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about 10 Exy tips for beginners. If this is your first time visiting my channel, don't forget to subscribe. I upload weekly videos on how to make an impactful business online. So make sure that you subscribe today. So let's go ahead and get started on this video. My tip number one is define your niche. So what do I mean by define your niche, right? So before you open your Etsy shop, it is really important that you define your niche. So if you do a search on Etsy right now, you will see that the most prominent shops, the ones that sell a lot of, a lot of sales, they work within a very specific niche. And the biggest mistake a lot of new Etsy sellers make, and even current Etsy sellers, is that they, th they think that going broad is better, right? And they think that selling a variety of different items and different products is the best way to go. And they often think, right, that if they niche themselves down in a market, and narrow their, it will narrow their sales. But to be honest, that is far from truth. When you niche down is the best way to not only attract the ideal customer, but is the best way to um, make more sales. A lot of times when people have too many stuff, it confuses customers and they don't get the sales. And then they, you know, they, they're wondering, why am I not making sales on my store? It might be because you have too many things. You have not identified yourself as who or what you are an expert on because you're selling soaps, purses, and top bags all in one shop. So therefore, if you want to niche yourself down, this is some stuff that you have to think about. And these are the things that will help you, right? So when you niche down, this is what you will get. You'll be able to identify your target audience a lot easier, right? You'll be able to become the expert in that particular niche. You're going to stand out from your competitors. You'll be able to dominate on the search results by receiving authority from Google and other large search engines. It's going to help you demonstrate that you are a trustworthiness business. Um, you'll be able to meet your customers' expectations and needs. It will help you build credibility. And it will also help streamline your business, which, you know, as a result, improve efficiency, productivity, and customer satisfaction. So the vital key is defining your niche. And when you define your niche or you think you have to find it, you go ahead and niche it and niche it and niche it again. And I know that it might sound a lot of work, but it is worth it at the end when you build a brand. You scale your business to the next level and you're making a lot of money. So therefore, if you ever want to scale your business and be the best at whatever you sell, these are the things that you have to do. You have to define your niche. Tip number two, identify your target customer. So first you have to find your niche and then you'll be able to say, oh, okay, now you could identify who is your ideal customer. And this is important because if you don't know who your ideal customer is, you will show your products and services to the wrong people and not make any sales. You will run Facebook ads or promoted listing ads on XE to the wrong people and not make any sales. So therefore, it's very important to understand who your target customer is. In the beginning, as a new business or as a brand new business, you're not going to have any insights to analytics and information that normally will help you complete a description of the person who you want to target. So the key elements is in the beginning as a new business is for you to create an audience profile. And an audience profile is when you sit down and you write down a piece of paper um, and you answer a couple questions to yourself to determine who you want to target. And it's really important that you do this and you don't overlook it. It's vital to the success of your business. And it's, it's really important that you complete, and it's also called a target market analysis, which is when you determine who is the person that you want to market, right? 
So I'll give you an idea. Um, let's say you sell um, wedding dresses, right? So you might ask yourself, okay, what is the name of this person I want to target, right? I know it sounds corny, but just write a name. You know, you, you're writing your ideal customer. So her name is going to be, let's say Nancy, right? My name, Nancy. What is her age? So you sell wedding dresses. So you might target people that are 25 to 45. Let's say that's the the type of people you're looking for because your dress is a little bit more for the younger people. What is your gender? What is the gender? Obviously females, right? Where do they live? Do you want to sell in the U.S.? Do you want to sell your wedding dresses internationally? Determine that. Um, how much do they earn? So the people that you want to target to, how much do they earn? If they earn $10 an hour, and your dresses are, I don't know, five to ten thousand. That might not be the person for you, right? So, understanding, okay, I want to target people that make this much to this much because they'll be more willing to buy my product versus someone that makes less income that might not be able to buy my product, right? So, understanding that is very important. What are their marital status? Are they married? Obviously, they're not married. What are the marital status? They're engaged, right, to get married. Um, why would they buy from your shop? What makes it unique? Why would someone buy from your shop a wedding dress when they could buy from all the mil- all the million stores that they sell? What makes your unique? Are yours stitched by hand? Are yours lace? Do you add beads? Whatever. Just think about that answer. Um, what industry do they work in? Right. Understand that. How do they think? Right. When they're shopping for a dress, this particular group of people, where would they go? Would they go on intra- on Pinterest? Would they go on Instagram? Thinking about stuff like that. Um, what challenges do they face, right? Is it, is it finding the perfect dress? Is it um, maybe they're very particular and they want something very, very unique and different? You got to think about stuff like that. And what pushes them to make a purchase decision, right? Why? Why would this person buy from you when they could just walk to a store and not, and why would they buy it online? Maybe yours is so different, so unique. They've never seen a dress like this before and that's why they're going to buy from you, right? So just thinking about stuff like this. And and I want to emphasize, this is very important to develop an audience profile of your ideal customer. And it's going to require some work from your end and involve critical thinking but it's going to help you get started in the right track. And if you want to build a personal brand, it's useless if you don't target the right customer. So don't overlook this tip, okay? Tip number three is keyword brainstorming. So as you know, SEO plays a a, a big factor when you sell online, whether you sell on Etsy, Shopify, Amazon, blog, website, etc. You need to have people find your product and services. Now, not only do you need to find people to find your products and services, but you need to find the right people that are interested in your products and services. So the first step is making sure that you do an activity that I call keyword brainstorming. You sit down and you start writing down words that you use to describe your business products or services, whatever you sell. And the the objective of brainstorming is you're, you're trying to find the right keywords that you could use as a tactic later on for your on-page SEO factor, for your off-page SEO factor, to optimize your store, to optimize your listing description, and all of this by keeping your ideal customer in mind, right? Everything works in hand. All these tips that I'm giving you, they all work hand in hand. So keep that in mind. And by doing this, it's going to help you also rank higher organically in the search results. Or also determine if maybe you are in a saturated market that is going to be really difficult to rank organically. So therefore, you have to come up with a strategic plan of saying, okay, I'm going to start spending $400 a month on ads because I want to compete for these specific keywords that I know is too competitive, right? And and if I try to do organically without any ads, I would never get the traffic that I really want. 
So it's going to help you. Keyword brainstorming will help you identify whether you're going to do ads on that particular keyword or that particular listing or whether you're not because you could rank organically. So either way. Or maybe you want both. You want more exposure, so you do both. Now, there are four things to consider when researching for keywords, okay? Relevance, traffic, competition, and commercial value. Relevant is, is basically you want to consider choosing keywords that are, are relevant to whatever your niche is. So if it does not have no relevance to your niche, leave them out, okay? So the best way I always tell people to keep track um, in when you're doing your main, like your keyword brainstorming is to make sure that you create one rooted keyword. So let's say wedding, that's your, your keyword because you, you sell wedding dresses. So maybe you put wedding dresses. And then from there, kind of brainstorm on the on that keyword. And if the additional keywords that you're writing down from don't match your main rooted keyword, then you need to remove them because they're non-relevant keywords. So therefore, when you use non-relevant keywords, it also drives non-relevant target, not target, but non-relevant customers, right? You're showing your products and services to people who are not really interested in what you're selling. Right. So therefore, you might have high views, you might have high impressions, but you notice that your conversions are low because no one's buying from you. So keep that. Keep keep the relevance, keep the keywords that are relevant, keep the keyword and then remove the ones that are not. Number two is traffic. So in order to improve your exit traffic, you have to make sure you use the proper keywords and Keep in mind the most profitable keywords are keywords that have high traffic but low competition. So you want to find those keywords that have high monthly searches, which means that people are looking for this specific product or service, but the competition is lower than the traffic. So that means that they're in that there are not that many other listings or that many other people advertising this product or service. However, if you have a product that the competition is higher than the search, you don't want to use those keywords. And if you have a product that the competition is um, high, I'm sorry, the traffic is high, but the competition is slightly lower, that's kind of the sweet spot. That's the one that you want to take because you have like basically a room in there to compete with the other stores. But if there's a lot of competition, and that kind of overlooks the traffic, then you're going to be buried in the search results. And even if you spend advertising, you're going to probably spend a lot of money in advertising because there's so many people competing. So therefore, your cost per click is going to be a lot higher. So just keep that in mind. Now, the next one is competition. So we're kind of talking about that. So, you know, making sure that you find low competition keywords that are going to be a great return on your investment and your time. So, you know, like I said, the biggest mistake you can make is trying to optimize your Etsy shops with keywords that have too much competition because every single market has some sort of competition. And if it's saturated niche, it might take you years to get rank for that particular keyword or, or tag. And also to make money or make the type of money you want to make. So taking the time to research your keywords, taking the time to research a competition is going to help you find the best possible keywords for your shop. And the last one is commercial value. So search volume is a very important metric when you do, when you determine the value of a keyword, right? If the keyword has no commercial value, It means that there's no potential to make money from that particular keyword. So when you do an XE rank, when you use XE rank and you do a keyword research and next to it, it says um, volume zero, which means no one's searching for that keyword. Don't use that keyword. That means no one's searching for it. So therefore, your potential for making money with that keyword is zero because no one is searching for that. When people use their own tag, their own shop name as a tag, 
that has no potential money because if you're not a well-known brand, no one's no one is going to be searching for Myla's wedding invites, right? As a store because no one knows you yet. So don't use your don't use your name shop if you don't have any value. Now if you do and you are established and people are starting to recognize you, then that's when you use your own name shop or your own name if you are a brand. But if you are just starting, do not use those type of keywords because it's just pointless and you're just wasting the space when you could replace it with a keyword that you could actually get traffic. And I'll give you an idea. There are tools out there that you could use to determine the value of, of a particular keyword. You could use Google AdWords, which is what I use. And for instance, if you search the word, last time I did the search, the word wedding invites, the search volume for that was $12,000 a month on Google. And the keyword was worth a dollar and six cent. Now, this was a couple months ago, so probably went up by now. Um, so if you were to rank on the first 10 spots for the keyword um, wedding invites, you have the possibility of driving, right? The commercial value is 12,000. So you have the possibility of driving 12,000 people per month with that one particular keyword to your Etsy shop or to your blog or to wherever you want to drive it to. So that is understanding commercial values, understanding does it have any value for me? Does it have a lot of um, traffic? And then you compare that. Can I land organic? Can I compete with it organically? If it has a lot of value and you could compete with it organically, then yes, you should use those particular keywords. So understanding or doing brainstorm activities are very important every time you add a new listing to your shop. And it's very important to optimize your shop with those keywords as well, as well, so you can rank higher in the search results for those search queries. Tip number four is have everything you need before opening your shop. So if it's your first time opening a shop on Etsy, one of the requirements is to have a listing already pre-made. So you could just upload it and have one listing in your store. So make sure, right? that you have that particular listing before you start the process of opening your, your Etsy shop. Another thing is naming your Etsy shop. You know, you will need to come up with a creative name for your shop. I mean, you're joining millions of stores that are already on Etsy. So you, you know, your name or the name that you were thinking of might already be taken. So if you have a name that you want, it's already taken. You could try to add, you know, shop at the end or boutique making it like wedding design boutiques or wedding designs by Myla, something like that. Um, and what I would do is try to match your name to your niche. So don't name your store Wendy105678. I've seen stores like that. That's confusing. It's not attractive. You're not branding at all. So make sure that it matches your niche as much as you can. Um, and by just adding or tweaking something at the end, if you're if the one name that you want is taken, just add something at the end and make it a little bit different, but still niching to your to your product and services. Also, Xy banner. You know, I recommend you know taking the time to create an Xy banner. Um, it's not a deal breaker by any means if you don't have a banner. I just personally think that incorporating a banner um, is great for branding purposes, and also keep in mind that the banner. Um, should tie into your aesthetic of your shop. And, you know, a lot of people use their banners as a way to showcase um, specials that they have, or maybe they showcase different seasons. Although they say like, Merry Christmas, this is the specials that we currently have, or Happy Halloween, these are the current specials that we currently have. Um, so having a banner is just a great way to showcase your store, to tie in your branding, to shake, showcase additional products that you sell. You could have like, um, if you sign up for XE Plus, you could have like the main banner, you could have a second banner that says new items, and then you could have another banner that says um, working on whatever, or maybe the second one would be um, whatever you currently sell, and the last one would be new items to showcase those products. Things like that, thinking out the box. Um, make sure your About Us page is filled out. Um, it's very, very important components of your Etsy shop. 
The about me should include like a brief description of your store, products, and services. It helps build credibility and, and it helps build, you know, trust with customers. And you can even upload like a picture of your studio to showcase your workspace. Um, you could showcase, you know, you should do pictures of you and yourself working, uh, maybe a story behind your business. But keep in mind that Etsy is a unique platform where buyers come to get unique and customer items. So unlike other e-commerce platform like Amazon, they want to know who they're buying from. They want to know who they're buying their handmade product from. So it's important that you take your time to fill this out. Um, it could also lead to unexpected collaborations and opportunities like, like press coverage. I know I have a couple of my clients that have been featured in BuzzFeed because as a result of having their shop optimized correctly, right? And they had an amazing about me story. So because of that, they were showcased on BuzzFeed. So having this is really, really important, okay? So make sure that you take the time to fill out your about me section. Um, you know, keep in mind that when you add the new item, the, the new listing that I said earlier, that when you open the shop, you have to add a new listing, have the best photos of that particular product, have your listing description already filled out, and have your title and tags and your attributes for that particular product. Um, and also not just attributes, but category where you want to put it in. Um, so keep that in mind. And also curating your shop is important. Curating your shop is, I, I see this as a big mistake as well with many Etsy sellers is that they don't take the time to fill out anything. They create the store. They don't have a logo. They didn't, you know, do the banner. They didn't, they didn't even put a picture of themselves um, as the seller. And it really helps when you curate your shop because it tells people that this is a complete store. And if you don't, if you don't have that, then it looks incomplete. So making sure you do that. And I will, that will be the next tip, but I will talk about it a little bit more, but do want to throw that in here. And tip number five is the curation of your shop. And I will go into a little bit more in depth what I mean by it. So when you are looking at your store, once you open your new store, you want to kind of take a step back and you want to think about your store. Like, do you have your, did you fill out everything, right? Did you do your about me section, your shop announcement? Did you do the banner that we talked about? Do you have a listing up, etc.? And then what you want to do also is you want to treat it as a real business when you are you know, potentially trying to sell to buyers as a trustworthy brand, right? So what you want to do is you want to look at, do you offer diverse selection of products, right? Do you, do you have the band that we talked about? Do you have a profile picture? Do you have a, a shop icon? Do you have the about me section completing? Do you have policy set in place? Do you have a shop title? Do you have your story filled out? Did you add your social media and website links? Do you have your city and state so people could relate and be like, oh, she's in Chicago. I'm in Chicago too, right? Or so they could know where you're from. Do you have a clear and precise listing description? This is really, really important that you curate your shop and you offer all these different things to the customer. That way, when the customer is looking at the listing, they feel comfortable. They feel like your store is trustworthy. They feel like when they read the listing description, everything and anything they needed to know was there. They don't have no confusion. They have clear transparency. They're happy with your product. They're happy with your store. So let's go ahead and make the sale. Or let's go ahead and complete the sale because that buyer has an informed, has made an informed decision on your products. So that is the curation of your shop. Make sure that you do it because it's really important. The next one is product pricing. So make sure that, you know, you, you sit back and you calculate everything. You calculate materials, expenses, labor, and profit. You know, ask, ask yourself, you know, materials. Make sure to calculate everything you use to make the product from start to finish. Expenses. 
include any monthly expenses you generate as a result of making the product. If you spend $5 extra a month for a software, whatever it is, make sure you calculate it. Labor. I can't tell you. I think this is like the biggest one. The biggest mistake many Etsy sellers make is undercharge themselves. So make sure that you're paying yourself for your time. And the last one is profit. You know, you're running a business and the ultimate goal is to quit your job and work from home. And if you want to do that in order to accomplish that task from working from home, one must, you know, one factor is profit into the equation. So, you know, I recommend using um, E-Rank. They have a calculator, a profit calculator that could help you estimate your XC fees and profit. So it also calculates your XC fees and the, and you could put in the pricing that you're going to charge it. If you're going to charge $20 a month, you put everything else and it calculates your profit. Another thing I want to kind of throw in here is that I see so many people that say new shop open 50% off. Stop doing that. Stop on the selling your product and services, especially if you are working and you are busting your tail to make that product. Um, I know that in the beginning when you're doing anything new, whether it's Etsy or any business, the first thing that creeps in your mind is doubt, right? Doubt. Am I going to make a sale? Is this, is my product worth $30? Is my product worth $60? Well, your product is worth whatever you, you claim is worth, right? Because you are the only one that knows how many hours you spend. You are the only one that knows, you know, how much material you spend, um, how much you put into it, how much labor you did. So therefore, stop discounting, giving discounts to everybody and anybody just to make a sale. If your products are amazing, if you have great product photography, if you have the curation of your shop filled out, if you're doing everything you're supposed to be doing, the sales will come. It might take a little bit longer. It might might be because you need to adjust your SEO. Maybe you need to adjust your listing description. Maybe it's the photos. Maybe something else is not clicking with the sale. But do not undervalue yourself. Do not undervalue yourself. I will say it again. Do not undervalue yourself because you are here to make a profit and ultimately you're just hindering yourself by doing it. So I wanted to make sure I address this one. Number seven is add call to actions. So when you... So let let me kind of go back. So let's define what is a call to action. So a call to action, also known as a CTA, is a statement designed to kind of make the reader take immediate action. The call to action that we use um, is to determine whether or not make someone take an action, basically. So help someone make an action. Um, Maybe they don't want to take the action, but to help them make the action. So how do you write effective call to actions that will make customers into conversions, right? Convert your customers. So one is define the purpose and goal of your message. Do you want to drive more traffic? Do you want to capture more leads or or more customers? So if you currently have a blog um, that's associated with your, let's say with your Etsy shop, what you want to do is capture leads so you can later market to them your product or services and this is an effective way that you could do it with a call to action you could say um, for instance you could say want to leverage best practices uh, deliver straight to your inbox click here to subscribe to our monthly content newsletter so this is like a a type of cta that's going to help you grow your email list and therefore having that list right that we talked about that's interested in your niche, then you can target them later on with additional products, services, etc. You could also do a call to action on XE, right? What we're talking about today, which is t- telling that customer or taking that reader to take another specific action. So you could say, um, let's say you have a picture, a text picture, and on the picture you said, click below to view our matching items. Or click below to learn more about this beautiful sign. Or click below to view our matching items and also to learn more about the design. That's a call to action. You're telling the customer, click to learn more about this product. When you add a call to actions, people actually follow it. Um, 
it's a marketing strategy that's been around for a very long time. You've probably seen some of these. These are considered like strong verbs. Um, buy now, learn more, click here, activate your 20% discount, don't miss out, limited quantities available, add to cart. So those are strong verbs. And then they have some that are sense of urgency, which is like the sale ends tomorrow, don't delay, while supplies last, sales end soon, today only, exclusive sales, supplies running out. So those are sense of urgency. And when you're writing a call to action, it's important to tell the visitors what to expect when they click on the button or perform the action. So for example, get started right away with our free XE worksheets, checklists and resources, and receive occasional emails on XE tips. Yes, I want it. That's a call to action that I add to my blog. And I'm telling them right away, this is what you get when you join. So it's really nice to do those because those actually increase your conversions um, and increase your leads as well. So call to actions could be used in many different ways. You could put a call to action on a text. And I have a video about this of different call to actions. You could put a call to action in your listing description and say, click here to view matching items. Click here to view similar items. Click here to learn more about our shop. Click here to get receive a discount if you, you know, get added to our email list, etc., etc. But adding those call to actions do help increase the likelihood of getting a sale because the longer they stay in your shop, the longer they're browsing, especially if you said click here to view matching items, they might be like, oh, I do need a wedding sign, a table number, a wedding placement card, etc. So let me just go ahead and buy all of them. But maybe they didn't know that previously before, so they didn't buy from you. Or they were not they didn't buy from you, they were about to leave your store. But because they saw the call to action, they clicked on the link and now magically all the matching items came up. They're excited about buying from you. So therefore, adding call to actions is a marketing strategy that's going to help you um, learn how to sell and it's also going to help you increase your sales. Number eight, provide excellent service or customer service. I know it sounds redundant that I'm talking about this and I know everybody's like, oh, I know about this, Nancy. I don't know why you keep talking about this or I don't know why would you mention this one, duh you should provide customer service. But I think that too many people don't provide excellent service. They provide okay service. But excellent is a little bit different than okay service. So as a small business owner and you're selling on an e-commerce platform that there can't inter- the customer can't interact with you face by face, providing good quality customer experience is pitiful for your success. Um, I can't tell you how many times I got a sale for simply being prompt, answering their questions, and going above and beyond. And it's all because I provided great customer service. You know, what, what does it mean to provide excellent customer service, right? What does it really, really mean? And it means you listen, you responded in a friendly manner. And you go above and beyond what the customer expects because you want to do or you want to be, you want to exp- them have, I'm sorry, the best experience they ever had. That's excellent customer service. So I'm kind of going to go over some tips for you guys um, to provide excellent customer service. One, I would, as an XE beginner, I would download the XE seller app. When you download it, you are able to manage your business on the go. And I know that we're all busy and we have a family, etc. The nice thing about the XC Seller app, you're able to respond to customers um, directly from your phone. You're able to see your, you know, your stats. You're able to manage stores. I mean, manage your orders. And the best part of, of the app for me personally is being able to message potential buyers and not missing an opportunity to provide customer service and potentially close out the sale. A lot of times when a customer messages your store, they message five other stores. Um, I have had clients that I freelance and I'm like working on the XC store. If I notice the same customer just went to one store and messaged the other store, the same exact question. 
And the game of getting the sale is who responded first. Whoever responds first with the best customer service gets the sale. And it's tedious, but this is how we work. We live in a world that is instant gratification. Everybody wants everything now. They don't want to put in the work. They don't want to wait one whole day for you to respond. They want you to respond within seconds. They don't care if you're sick. They don't care if you just got home from your day job. They don't care if you're walking the dogs. They want now. So I'm not saying that you got to put your life in pause. All I'm saying is if you add the app, it's going to help you. Maybe you're not going to be able to respond to every single customer within seconds. But even if you did three out of 10, that's three additional sales that you could potentially get. So if you want to increase your sales, responding them to them quickly is one of the best ways to increase your sales. Fix your mistakes. That's another one. If you find that you make a a mistake, it's important to fix it and take ownership. You know, transparency in your business is really, really important. And it's okay, we, you know, to say, hey, we made a mistake and here we are going to take the steps to fix it. Always strive to go out of your way by not only providing a resolution to fix the issue, but offering something of value. You know, maybe you could waive the shipping fee or throw in something extra in the order as a thank you. But it's really important to take ownership when you make the mistake. Go the extra mile, right? Um, to build loyal customers, go the extra mile. Make it a habit, you know, with every customer and you will beat the competition. And keep yourself in the radar for future business. I mean, these people are going to be like, oh, I want to go to that store. They were amazing last time I was there. And some examples of going the extra mile is be proactive by following up with any issues, respond quickly to inquiries, show appreciation by saying thank you to new customers after a sale, always deliver more than more than they expected, make it personal by responding to your customers by their first name, prioritize your customers' time, say thank you even when they don't buy from you. Be generous to your most to to your most loyal customers. Those are the ones you give a discount. You don't give a discount because you just open a store. You give a discount to loyal customers. Um, you know, don't wait for opportunities to to keep in touch with your customers. Send out a thank you card. Show interest in people, and focus on the customer needs. And always respond with a positive attitude, no matter how bad the situation is. Even if the the customer's fault, always respond with a positive attitude. And, you know, thank your customers. I know a lot of people um, send thank you cards to the customers. And it's an easy, simple way to make a positive impression. And, you know, many XC sellers miss the opportunity to build loyal customers because they don't even say thank you. I think, you know, it's such an effective way to provide customer service without taking a lot of time and effort. I bought a whole box of 100 cards on Amazon for $8, thank you cards. And I send out those to my clients. It's simple. Um, So make sure that you do that. Another thing I want to talk about is empathy. If you show empathy to customers, you will win them over. And, you know, empathy is just listening. Make sure you recap everything the customer just told you so they know that you understand. Make it your problem. Allow them to vent. You know, be respectful of their feelings when they're responding to you. Put yourself in the customer's shoes. Meet their expectation. You know, show that you care. Um, Thank them for allowing you to resolve their issues. That's a big one. Um, Ask questions to better help. You know, find a resolution. Give options and suggestions and go the extra mile. These are really, really some great steps to take to take your customer service to the next level. And, you know, offer for suggestions, you know, um, another way to take like your customer service to the next level um, is by offering like another suggestion. You could say, hey, just to let you know, you bought the sign from my store. I actually sell matching items. Here's the link in case you're interested. Um, You never know, just by doing that, it doesn't always guarantee a sale, right? But it does 
guarantee great customer service because some people will look at it as, oh, they're just trying to sell me. But if you were really nice from the beginning, they won't take it that way. And even if they do, they'll be like, well, at least I know that they have matching items. And the worst they're going to say, no, I'm not interested. But the best part of it is that they might be interested and you might increase your sales. So offering suggestions is always a great thing. And the last one is ask for feedback. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong. If you want to grow your XE business, you need to seek input on others, right? It doesn't matter if you like, if what you're doing, it doesn't matter if you feel like you're doing an exceptional job, there's always like room for improvement. You know, ask your customers for feedback and be clear that you want it, you want honest feedback so that you could do better, right? With your customers. So you could better understand things from their perspective. And that you're not going to take it personal. Just ask for feedback. It's really important. I always ask for feedback. And when I do my videos or I have a Facebook group and I do like a post and people give me feedback, I actually love feedback because I could tell my husband, what you think about the video? Of course, he's going to say it was great. But listening from you guys that are my target customers, listen from you guys that listen and take the time to invest in my business. It helps me grow and it makes me think about, okay, maybe I should narrow my videos to this. Maybe I should be more specific. Maybe I need to slow down. Maybe I need to clarify certain things. But asking for feedback is really important or listening, right? When they give you feedback and saying, I love your content or I don't love your content, taking that feedback as long as it's constructive feedback is really, really important not to take it personal and learn from it. So asking for feedback also helps you a lot. Number nine, make an investment in learning new things. I can't tell you how important this is. A lot of people have the mentality that I'm going to solve it myself or I'll just figure it out. And they keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And they never get the results they want because they keep repeating the same thing. So when I say make an investment in learning new things, whether it's a magazine, whether it's listening to YouTube videos, whether it's listening to podcasts, whether it's reaching out to other successful XC sellers and asking them questions about how they were able to become so successful, these are things that you should be able to make an, make time for. Um, your business, the more time you make for it, the more you learn you're investing in yourself. So therefore you're investing in your business. Um, a lot of people have the mentality of instant gratification. They have a shop open for one month. They've never sold online. They don't have no idea what SEO is. They don't know product photography. This is very, very new to them, but they want the results like yesterday, right? That's really unrealistic because if it's your first time selling and you never done any of this, it's going to take you time to learn. So it's important that you understand that and you make the investment to learn to achieve greater results. But if you are new to it and you expect for things to happen within a month and then and a month later you want to quit, then this is not the type of business for you because when you do an online business, not only do you have to learn it, once you learn it, it's always changing. So keeping that in mind and having that perspective of, okay, things do change and I need to adapt and I need to learn, whether it's through a, you know, learning for free or paying somebody a course or signing up for something that is going to help you um, save time and potentially get where you want to be at a quicker pace. Because someone who already has been there created a formula for you to follow. So just keep that in mind. And number 10 is value your time. Value your time. You know, don't get burned out trying to do 20 million things. And you think you're productive, but you're really not. When you're doing so many things um, that are not the most important things that you should be doing for your business, you're spending countless hours chasing likes or countless hours chasing follow to unfollow or getting, um, you know, trying to get your friends to like your posts, then you just get burned out. You get overwhelmed. You feel like you're not, you know, doing everything and anything you could do for your business. And ultimately you don't feel like you're achieving anything. Right. So 
my biggest thing is value your time. Uh, make sure that, you know, you think about um, what you need to do, what are the important things that you need to do. And if you need to hire someone for help, then do that. Stay in your zone. Stay in your creative zone. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. But what that means is instead of trying to master 30 things that is not your creative zone and your creative zone is creating wedding dresses or is making art, stay in that zone and let other people focus on stuff that potentially, you know, you're doing right now and hire people. If you can't hire people, um, make a list of the most important things that you have to do, prioritize them and try to do one or two things per day. Don't do 30 things. And then when you do 15 items, you say, I didn't do anything for the day. And I started at nine this morning. It's already 8 p.m. and I haven't done anything. Well, you have done a lot. But because you didn't do the whole list, you feel like you haven't done. So therefore, um, time, you know, valuing your time and having a time efficiency set up saying, okay, I'm going to block a time. And from, you know, 9 a.m. to 10, I'm going to do XC listings. And from 10 to 11, I'm going to market it and then I'm going to take a break and call it a day. And then tomorrow, the next day from 9 to 11, I'm going to create products. And then the next day, do something different. That's going to give you more uh, of a balanced life because you're not so overwhelmed trying to build a business in two days. When you take the time and you and you come up with a strategic plan, that's the best way to do it. But you're going to do that when you know the value of your time. So don't spend countless hours burning yourself out or doing things that are insignificant when you could be doing other stuff that give you more in return. So spending eight hours a day in social media, getting your 10 clicks with zero sales, but maybe spending three hours fixing your SEO might get you an additional 30 sales per month. Keep that in mind. So these are 10 XE tips for beginners. I know this video was a little bit longer than you probably thought. I hope that was helpful. Uh, make sure that you leave a comment below. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. Give me feedback, right? Like that was one of the things I was talking about. And guys, if you are interested in signing up for my Pinterest course, I'm going to leave a link below where you can sign up to my email to receive the information once I have it available. So don't forget to click below. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to like, comment, and share.